What a spicy episode with an unexpected Bankai. Let's go! But the Stern Ritters strike back by releasing their most powerful technique. I can't wait to see how this goes. If you haven't watched the latest episode of Bleach the Thousand Year Blood War as yet, spoilers ahead. The following episode is titled The Fundamental Verulians and it adapted chapters 552 to 554 with some additions from chapter 559. The captains get their Bankai back and now put the hurt on the stern Ritters. But wouldn't you know it? It was just the beginning of the fight as they go all in and release their most powerful form. So let's see what's been adapted and what's been blown to shit. This episode may be a little calmer, but it's a lot like the other episodes, so don't really expect much other than jumping around. Although it doesn't do that as much with this one. Anyways, the episode starts out with showing us an anime exclusive scene of the different battlefronts in the Soul Society. Iba is facing off with some soldiers. Inamori is also having some difficulty, as well as showing Isane hiding and healing some injured Shinigami. We do get a quick look at Toshio's fight against Baz B, where he does get cut down, and then we see Shuhei as he does his thing. I really do like that we get to see what Ikaku and Yumichika is doing in this episode, because in this manga, they only actually appeared further down. We then switch over to Toshiro, where we start off with the events of chapter 552, titled The Fundamental Vermilions. It starts out with Kang letting Basby know it's his majesty's decision to kill the captains with their own Bankai. And since he was the one who stole Toshiro's Bankai, he will be the one to end the captain. It also seems that he managed to mess up Matsumoto on his way here. Not like she really stood a chance in the first place. She's like what, the female version of Renji? All bark and no bite. Kang is ready for a double execution. And so he readies his stolen Bankai, Daigeren Kyoin Maru. He taunts the captain, telling him that we stole your Bankai, bitch, and now we're gonna use it to kill you. We switch over to Captain Mayuri, who's having a nice combo with his former boss. You know, I really don't understand the weird animosity between these two. Urahara actually saved him from the maggot nest, didn't he? It must be jealousy. This is where the episode would begin and we would get our title card, The Fundamental Brilliance. When we resume, we get back to Urahara and Mayuri. Seems that Urahara has found a way to recover the stolen Bankai and to prevent the Quincy from taking it once more. But Mayuri is being pity, telling him that it's a crime to connect a communicator to him without his permission and disconnects Urahara. But as per usual, Urahara pulls a fast one and the captain popped out right behind him, telling Mayuri that he needs his help. But Mayuri would rather not, saying that he isn't able to do to the lockdown that the Quincy has placed him under. But wouldn't you know it, Urahara sees his hidden lab and says, hey, you can definitely help him there. So the research department gets to work locating the captives. We get this anime exclusive shot showing some ugly ass bugs flying around trying to get connectors everywhere. Pretty creepy if you ask me. They kind of look like the captain's bankai. Urahara has created some pills which will poison the captain's bankai with hollow reishi. So it will release from the Quincy. During the end of their explanation, we do get word that they've located all the captains. So he tells them to get in touch with them where he sends the pills to them and explain to them how the process works and this would get their bankai back. We skip this one panel of Kang. Toshiro does touch the the pill and Kang loses control of the captain's bankai. This is where the first chapter would end. Chapter 553, titled Frozen Cross, begins with Kang realizing that he's losing control of the captain's bankai. When he looks over to Toshiro, he sees that Toshiro has already gotten one wing and he's getting back up. Now, just in case you're asking how can Toshiro rise from this, it's because his bankai allows him to recover based on the amount of moisture in the air. Kang questions why the bankai is returning to Toshiro. And here I thought the captain would start monologuing and, and telling him the truth, but thankfully, Toshiro doesn't say a thing about it. We head over to Soifon, wounded on Ground, about to be assimilated by BG9, in which case her lieutenant saves her and he hands the pill over to her. This affects BG9, who also doesn't understand what's happening. But this is where Soifan would activate her Bankai, which shocks the stern with her. And this is where she probably says, Shocking, right? Bye, and fires it off. A direct hit on the stern reader sends shockwaves across the soul society. We do skip these two panels. Kang doesn't change his resolve and charges into the captain, saying that he's just a little punk and he should die here. But the captain's bankai diverts its attack. It won't attack itself nor its master. Kang attacks Toshiro, saying that there's no way the bankai has a mind of its own. Poor Kang doesn't even know. He does start slapping around the captain a little bit, but Toshiro is too busy listening to his sword's voice again, and oh, we missed hearing this. 
When he reveals his new look, it's due to the spiritual pressure that's been incorporated into his soul. So, kind of donning a hollow mask in a way. Seems Toshiro is back in this fight. Kang is shocked and tries a move to get the upper hand. But Toshiro isn't having any of it and insta-freezes Kang, which is where the manga chapter would end. Chapter 554, titled Desperate Light, begins with Baz seeing the fight between Kang and Toshiro from a distance. Punk ass got got, idiot. Toshiro won, but he was still gravely wounded before he got his Bankai back, so he succumbs to his injuries and falls to the ground when someone would approach. This would be the midpoint of the episode. So when we resume, we do get an anime exclusive scene of the Bankai leaving the medallions along with Mambi and other stern Ricker just looking on. His majesty isn't pleased, but it seems that he predicted this as well, as said by Uri. Now comes the highlight of the episode. Shinji facing off with some soldiers and releases his Bankai, which is an anime exclusive scene. After 20 years, it all leads up to this. Seems his Bankai can change the perception of everyone on the battlefield. Friends become enemies and enemies become friends. Or something along that lines. <laughs> but this Bankai would seem terrible in a one-on-one -on -one fight. Overall, I still love it. And Thank you so much for animating this. In the next scene, we actually skip over to chapter 559 titled The Night Ride, when Ikaku and Yumichika were hiding and then Shuhei would find them, only to be attacked by Nacho Libre, who jumps right into an anime exclusive scene. We leap back on over to chapter 554 when Bambi threw her medallion and blew up a couple Shinigami, all the while being annoyed that the other stern returns were all losing. But her talking falls on deaf ears as her posse has abandoned her. This sends her into a fit of rage. She really is a hothead, isn't she? She threatens to turn the entire place into a wasteland. And this is where Kumamura would finally arrive, sporting his new gear, hiding his face. But he isn't alone. During his talk with Bambi, Shinji would join the fight, looking all menacing, using his sword's ability to send her off her rockers. I really never understood why you have to tell your opponent your abilities, but hey, have it your way. Shinji does use his ability on her, though he doesn't like fighting girls, but he would come to the resolve to, you know, off her. We then switch on over to an anime exclusive fight, the guys versus Nacho Libre. It seems that they are also overpowering him, stabbing him in the face. This is where we will get his majesty saying that he knew this would happen, and finally unlocks their stern return abilities to the max. Time for their script to activate in a blaze of glory and light. They all transform. Seems the Quincy couldn't use their full abilities with their Bankai, and now they have no restrictions. This is where the episode would end, but there are a few panels that weren't animated from this particular chapter. But I won't spoil that for you, I'll just gloss over it and pretend it isn't there. If it is covered in the next episode, I'll let you know about it, but if it isn't, then I'll still let you know about it as well. I'm predicting that those particular panels that weren't animated here would probably be animated in the next two episodes. Based on how they are, they are crucial for the main plot. But that's pretty much it. Not much deviations from the source material, just a little skipping around here and there. You may have noticed that I haven't said anything about the outro of the episode, because I'm leaving that up to you. Ichigo is still training and he sees some visions. But what do these visions mean and why does his eyes look like that? Tell me what you think this all means in the comments below. But for now, let's get to the numbers and see what was covered. Bleach, The Thousand Year Blood War, Episode 16, The Fundamental Virulence, covered three manga chapters. Each chapter would have an average of 17 pages, all adding up to 52. Each of these pages would have an average of 75 panels, adding up to 226, with three of those being unique or not adapted. This means that 223 panels were adapted, meaning across all three chapters, 98.68% were covered. A massive increase in the conversion version rate and the highest of the season so far and wow still a banger episode let me know in the comments below your thoughts on this episode and leave me a like on your way out if you haven't subscribed as yet please do it really helps out the channel i've been your host kyle thanks again for joining b nation peace out stay safe out there